In this video, we will be looking at two types of calculations that can be done for insoluble salts. First, we will be looking at how a common ion can affect the solubility of a relatively insoluble salt. Then we will be looking at how to predict if a precipitate will form when um, two salts are mixed with each other. So first, we're going to look at lead chloride, which is a relatively insoluble salt, and we can tell that it is an insoluble salt because the solubility product is 1.4 times 10 to the negative 8, a relatively small K value. So when we're dealing with a relatively insoluble salt, you can write an equation, an anionic equation, describing the dissolution of that salt. So lead chloride breaks into one lead 2 plus ion and two chloride ions. If there is not anything in solution when you add the lead chloride. We will initially start with no ions. Solubility is the amount of mol moles of lead chloride that dissolve. And so for every lead chloride that dissolves, we'll have one lead ion and two chloride ions in the water. That means at equilibrium, the concentrations of lead will be S and the concentration of chlorine, chloride ion will be 2S. And the KSP expression is going to be equal to the concentration of lead times the concentration of chloride squared. And the concentration of chloride is squared because of the two coefficient. So I'm going to plug in the concentrations in terms of S, which is the molar solubility. So we have S times, and you've got to be careful, we're taking 2S because uh, that's what comes from our stoichiometry. But it also has to be squared because in the K expression, the coefficient becomes an exponent. So you're kind of feels like you're using the coefficient of two in two places. So the KSP will be equal to S times 2S squared. And I'm going to plug in the value we know, 1.4 times 10 to the negative eighth is the value of that solubility product. And when I combine like terms over here and square the two and the S, I get 4S to the third. So I'm going to divide both sides by 4 and I get s to the third is equal to 4 times 10 to the negative ninth and I'm going to take the cubed root of both sides to get my to get the molar solubility and the molar solubility is um, 0 0.0015 moles per liter of molarity. That is the molar solubility of lead chloride when nothing, no common ions are dissolved in the solution. So there's no lead or chlorine already dissolved in the water before the lead chloride is added. Now on the other hand, if there's already some lead nitrate or we add in lead nitrate into the solution, so we're effectively adding a bunch of lead ions, what is the new solubility of lead chloride? And it says conceptually think about it, then calculate. So let's talk about the concept first. If we're adding lead nitrate, nitrate is an ion that makes its ionic compound always soluble. It's always going to be a spectator ion. So when I'm adding lead nitrate, I'm essentially dumping in a bunch of extra Pb2+. So if we think about the Shelley's principle and all the concepts we already know about equilibrium, if we add in a bunch of lead to our solution, um, the system is going to shift to use up some of that extra lead. So the reverse rate of reaction, the precipitation of lead chloride is going to happen much quicker until the system returns to equilibrium. So you're going to get a lot more solid generated. The amount of chlorine or chloride ion in the water is going to go down, down, down as the extra lead that was added is used up. So the, I'm expecting that the solubility of lead chloride will be much smaller. Now I can actually calculate that as well. So the lead chloride, it's the same equilibrium we're looking at before. Lead chloride is in equilibrium with lead and chloride. But this time, there's a whole bunch of lead already in there, a very significant amount from the lead nitrate. Got It's a one liter solution, so the concentration of lead from lead nitrate is 0.1 molar. 0.1 moles per liter. We do not have any chloride. So minus s, plus s, and plus 2s, applying this coefficients, the stoichiometry, and get that the equilibrium concentrations are now 0.1 plus s and 
to us. So I'm going to use the same KSP expression that I had before, only this time the lead concentration is 0.1 plus S, and the chloride concentration is still 2S to the second power. Kind of like what we did, what we've done with acids and bases, because KSP 1.4 times 10 to the negative 8th, we can say that the amount of lead contributed by the lead chloride, which is what S is, is very small in comparison to the amount of lead ion contributed by the lead nitrate, which is 100% soluble because of the nitrate ion. Therefore, um, taking 0.1 plus S is, to significant figures, basically going to be 0.1. So KSP, plug that in, our value of KSP in, because that doesn't change. The temperature hasn't changed. But now it's equal to 0.1 times 4s squared. So when I solve that for s, I'm going to get that now the solubility of the lead chloride has decreased to 1.9 times 10 to the negative fourth moles per liter. So it's a much, or as we expected, the addition of the lead nitrate decreases the solubility of the lead chloride, or in other words, a lot more lead chloride precipitates, it's not going to dissolve much. So the addition of lead nitrate decreases the solubility of the insoluble lead chloride. Another type of problem that you can encounter with insoluble salts and their equilibrium is trying to decide if a precipitate will form when you do basically a double replacement reaction. So we're going to look at, in this case, the reaction of sodium hydroxide with calcium chloride. And we would have looked at problems like this earlier in the year, and we're trying to figure out this is, you know, a precipitation reaction. First off, what salt is it that's going to precipitate, and then will it precipitate form at all? So it's a double replacement reaction. The sodium and calcium are going to switch places, so our products will be sodium chloride, salt, and calcium hydroxide, CaOH2. Of those two, sodium chloride, that's soluble all the time because sodium and chloride both indicate that it's soluble according to our solubility rules. On the other hand, calcium hydroxide, that's a relatively insoluble compound. So if we're to write a net ionic equation for this, something we just love doing, the net ionic equation would be calcium plus hydroxide, both as ions, because originally they're paired with, calcium's paired with chlorine, making it dissociate, and hydroxide's paired with sodium, which is a soluble compound. So two ions would connect up to make a precipitate calcium hydroxide. Notice this really looks like the reverse of um, this KSP equations that we've been writing. So you could write this as, cal to go along with how we do KSP, calcium hydroxide is in equilibrium with Ca2 plus and the hydroxide ion. And I shouldn't leave space here. I need a 2 in front of that hydroxide, and I need a 2 there as well. So we know what the insoluble salt is that would drive this precipitation reaction to happen. Now we need to figure out, based on the amount of sodium hydroxide and calcium chloride that we're adding and their concentrations, will there be enough calcium and hydroxide ions to cause a precipitate to form? So I'm going to use the um, volumes and molarities from the problem to figure out the concentration of calcium ions and the concentration of hydroxide ions next. So we'll do um, the hydroxide first. And concentration is, our moles are always going to be volume times molarity. So for the moles of hydroxide, we had 2 milliliters, 0.002 liters times 
0.2 moles per liter. That gives me the moles of hydroxide. And when we mix this thing together, the total volume is going to be one liter right here plus two milliliters. So basically one liter, 1.002 liters. So the concentration of hydroxide when these two solutions are mixed together will be 3.99 times 10 to the negative fourth molar. I'm going to do the same thing, figure out what the concentration of calcium ion would be. So for calcium, we've got one liter times 0.11 molar, but for every calcium, yeah, so it would be the moles would be one liter times 0.1 molar, and the volume when everything's mixed together is going to be 1.002 liters, the sum of the two solutions. So the calcium concentration before anything happens would be 0 0.0998 molar. So we need to figure out what Q is, what are the current conditions, and compare that to K to decide if precipitate will form. So Q is going to be equal to the calcium concentration times the hydroxide concentration squared because of the coefficient of 2. So 0 0.0998 times 3.99 times 10 to the negative fourth squared means that Q is 1.6 times 10 to the negative eighth. And we're going to compare that to K which, if I look it up for, I, I can look that up for calcium hydroxide, it is 8 times 10 to the negative 6. So Q is less than K. And if we think about like the simulation that we worked on last week, if the current conditions are such that the um, ions that we have in solution are less than the K value, you'll have an unsaturated solution there will be no solid, no precipitate forming, and the solution will not be at equilibrium. Therefore, so the solution is not at equilibrium and no solid precipitate will form. So there basically just isn't enough stuff here to make a reaction happen. The next question says, what changes could be made to make the insoluble product more or less soluble? So let's think about that. We'll start with less soluble. Right now it really, um, it's, it's dissolving, but things that could make it less soluble, meaning you would want to make the reverse reaction happen, we could add more calcium ion. So by adding perhaps calcium chloride, we could add more hydroxide ion, and we could do that by add, adding NaOH or another any other base for that matter. If you want to make it more soluble, we would have to take out some of the chlorine or the or some of the, sorry the calcium or the hydroxide in the water. We could do that by you could reduce the hydroxide concentration by adding an acid such as HCl. It's also worth making a, a comment here that because uh, this equilibrium involves hydroxide that and that's hydroxide and hydronium are the two things that are involved in acid base equilibrium that if we add an acid or base or in other words if we change the pH of the solution that will affect the concentration the solubility of calcium hydroxide more calcium hydroxide will dissolve if we add an acid less calcium hydroxide will dissolve if we add another base